Hi there folks and welcome back to the channel for another update on the development of Project Zomboid. This video will be in reference to the dev blog that was dropped on the 24th of November. We'll talk about the main points of the blog, how it's going to affect the game itself, and maybe throw in a little bit of speculation along the way too. Now before we get started I do just want to preface this one by saying that it wasn't a very lengthy blog post this time around and honestly I wasn't even going to cover it but I had some people asking and I figured I should probably keep up with my usual even if these updates will be a bit smaller until build 42 is around the corner. So with that out of the way, if you find the video useful or entertaining, please do consider dropping it a like. It seriously helps the channel and you can always subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now I'm going to kick this one off with what is probably the major topic of this update and then there's going to be a couple of extra things to wrap up at the end. The primary focus of the dev blog this week was to take a look at the work of Blair, who as a reminder was formerly a project Zomboid modder and has now joined the development team to work on several aspects of Build 42. Currently Blair is focusing on a massive farming overhaul for Project Zomboid, coming with several new aspects. Now there's quite a lot to be changed here, but the team's main focus is to make farming a more tactile and smooth experience. The example given in the blog post is that when it comes to watering plants, the team would like this to be through a direct mouse click rather than through a maze of menus. I think perhaps the biggest change to the farming system is the next one they mention, which is that under the new system, plants will have growing seasons with only a couple of months for each crop that's actually going to produce an optimal yield. If you plant your crops during the wrong period, you'll get lower yield from them and risk sickly plants. I can't quite decide if I like this or not, to be honest. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical about how enjoyable this will be for players, but as always, I'm willing to give it a try before I pass any real judgment. We'll be able to read the back of pack of seeds to gain this information so that we're able to make an informed decision on our crop choice. One change that I can definitely get behind though is the ability to plant crops using the vegetable itself where this is appropriate. For example, if you want to grow potatoes, you could just do that by planting a potato you already have. It seems like such a simple change but will bring a bit more diversity to the whole system, especially as we get more variety in the crops themselves. Now, speaking of that as well, it seems more variety variety is intended here, as the developers specifically mention corn and peas, which currently aren't a plantable item. When it comes to crops like these, we'll be able to dry seed corn and peas to preserve them for planting in the next year, so there's an added layer of depth coming there as well. Now as it stands, we currently don't have to do much maintenance with crops in Project Zomboid. Once we've watered them once, usually the rain does the rest of the work, and we only need to check on our crops every so often for disease, right? Plus there are ways to get around that by putting a couple of tiles between each planted tile of crops. Well, with the farming overhaul also comes pest control. The devs specifically mention slugs and snails that players will need to deal with, either using a looted pest control tool or perhaps a local remedy. Nearby plants in close proximity to your crops that tend to repel slugs and snails like rosemary will work too. And that brings us nicely to the next thing the developers touch on in this update, which is herbs. Currently, there aren't any herbs we can grow in Project Zomboid, but the intention is to add several to the game that will grow a bit quicker than the currently available crops. When harvested, they will be knocked down a few stages in their growing process, and of course, since they aren't really food, they won't help all that much with hunger. Rather, they will be added to cooking recipes and dishes. The devs also mention that we'll be able to use these herbs to propagate new patches of herbs whilst they are still fresh and and can be dried for later use. Personally, I'm really excited for this because it shows that along with the addition of new cooking recipes as of late, the developers are really looking to flash out this side of the game and I'm all for having new ways to survive and more of an emphasis being put on skills like farming and cooking combined. As I think it's fair to say that farming especially is fairly basic at the moment. The last thing that the devs mention with regards to all things farming is houseplants surprisingly. The new system will also come with the need to water houseplants. Potted indoor vegetation found in the world will now be living, just like regular crops and will require some tender loving care to be kept in good condition. After all, it's not like there's a post-apocalyptic gardener going around tending to them all. They'll be able to gain diseases like crops currently do and will be visibly seen to wilt before they die so that players will know to react and to tend to them if they need to or want to. In other news, we got a look at animals 
specifically sheep, without their skin. Yep, you heard that right. I imagine this is basically so we can see what the animals might look like when we butcher a carcass from hunting or from cattle that we've been raising at our bases. The devs think a little more muscle needs to be shown and the current models are a bit fatty, but they wanted to show this off regardless for players to see. The next bit is quite interesting. The developers mentioned that the past couple of weeks they've been working on getting the previously shelved fire system back on track, which includes the ability for the game to have liquid looking Molotov specific fire effects on the ground. The visuals for this are being fine tuned and improved soon according to the devs so they don't want to share any images or videos of this yet but have told us that rest assured it's going to be pretty cool. Excited to see that for myself for sure. So that's just about it for this development update but I do have one quick thing to mention that was in the blog post unrelated to the development of Project Zomboys. If you haven't ordered a Spiffo plushie just yet a reminder that these are available for a couple more days before they go away for the indefinite future so yeah if you're a game fan there is a link in the description for those. As always a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for backing the channel and believing in what I do and we've launched our stalker themed setup for December so if you want to join them there's a link for that in the description. Thanks folks and I'll see you all in the next one.